As we all know, on July 20th, Blue Origin successfully made a flight to the edge of orbit, making Jeff Bezos one of the first two billionaires to go to space. This seems to be the resounding success of Blue Origin so far. However, after the billionaire space founder came back to Earth, the company's internal affairs became chaotic. Many key engineers and leaders decided to leave the company. At least 17 key leaders and senior engineers have left Blue Origin this summer, with many moving on in the weeks after Bezos' spaceflight. Two of the engineers, Neaton Aurora and Lauren Lyons, this week announced jobs at other space companies, Elon Musk's SpaceX and Firefly Aerospace, respectively. Others quietly updated their LinkedIn pages over the past few weeks. The people who left the company are really familiar people in the rocket industry. Those departures include New Shepard Senior Vice President Steve Bennett, Chief of Mission Assurance Jeff Ashby, who retired, National Security Sales Director Scott Jacobs, New Glenn Senior Director Bob S., New Glenn First Stage Senior Director Todd Bykist, New Glenn Senior Finance Manager Bill Scammell, Senior Manager of Production Testing Christopher Payne, New Shepard Technical Project Manager Nate Chapman, Senior Propulsion Design Engineer Dave Sanderson, Senior HLS Human Factors Engineer Rachel Foreman, BE4 Controller Lead Integration and Testing Engineer Jack Nelson, New Shepard Lead Avionics Software Engineer Hung Va, BE7 Avionics Hardware Engineer Aaron Wong, Propulsion Engineer Rex Gu, and Rocket Engine Development Engineer Jerry Hudak. Now why did Blue Origin lose its top talents? Those who announced they were leaving Blue Origin did not specify why. However, cited in employee reviews on job site Glassdoor and Indeed, many workers were frustrated with executive management and the slow bureaucratic structure. There were employees at the company who only gave one-star reviews. One employee said, I really was happy to work here, but I'm totally disappointed in the culture, horrible management, and lack of direction. So many people are leaving. I understand why. There are many opinions that managers are clueless. There is some passion for space, but no follow through. If that's the case, there's no reason why engineers who are passionate about space can continue to devote themselves to Blue Origin. Some of the engineers who left were part of Blue Origin's astronaut lunar lander program. Bezos' company lost its bid for a valuable NASA development contract in April when SpaceX was announced as the sole awardee under the Space Agency's Human Landing System program, winning a $2.9 billion contract. But despite the Government Accountability Office last month denying Blue Origin's protest of NASA's decision, the company has continued to escalate its fight to be a part of the HLS program. Blue Origin first launched a public relations offensive against SpaceX's Starship rocket, and then on Monday sued NASA in federal court. This really creates resistance and frustration for most employees in the company. What they want is fair, but not blind competition. Meanwhile, their company is actually burning money to hire lawyers for insane lawsuits instead of space research. Before the departure of key leaders and engineers, what action did Blue Origin take to retain the remaining engineers? The company has nearly 4,000 employees around the U.S., with its headquarters in Kent, Washington, near Seattle, as well as facilities in Cape Canaveral, Florida, Van Horn, Texas, and Huntsville, Alabama. Ten days after Bezos' July 20th spaceflight, Blue Origin gave all its full-time employees a $10,000 no-strings-attached cash bonus. Ha ha ha, no strings attached, hey? Then this is not the first time Jeff has made such a decision. However, none of Blue Origin's contractors received it. The company confirmed the bonus with a spokesperson, noting that it was intended as a thank you for achieving the milestone of launching people to space. Can you feel the magnitude of my air quotes? Anyway, two employees said that internally, the bonus was perceived as the company's leadership attempting to entice talent to stay. Ha ha ha. See, I knew it was coming around to this. In response to the number of employees filing notices to leave after the launch. A look at Glassdoor reveals a sharp disparity in employee satisfaction with Blue Origin's leadership when compared with that of other top space companies. According to Glassdoor, just 15% of Blue Origin employees approve of CEO Bob Smith versus 91% for Elon Musk at SpaceX or 77% for Tory Bruno at United Launch Alliance. Meanwhile, Jeff's company has always been famous for its delays in its plans. So, 
what's the real reason? Blue Origin has struggled to deliver on multiple major programs since Bezos hired Smith as CEO in 2017. Bezos founded the company in 2000 with the goal of creating a future where millions of people are living and working in space to benefit Earth. Delays, although common in the industry in which the adage, space is hard, is persistently heard, have pushed back Bezos' vision highlighted by the departure of Blue Origin's chief operating officer late last year. Bezos launched to the edge of space as one of the members of the first crew on board Blue Origin's reusable New Shepard rocket. While the company has not disclosed pricing, New Shepard competes with Virgin Galactic in the realm of suborbital space tourism, with Blue Origin having sold nearly $100 million worth of tickets for future passenger flights. Although the first crewed New Shepard launch was a smooth success, Blue Origin's leadership had previously expected the rocket to begin launching people by the end of 2017. New Glenn is the reusable next-generation rocket that Blue Origin is developing but has yet to launch. Originally slated for an inaugural flight in 2020, the first New Glenn is not expected to lift off until the fourth quarter of 2022. That's despite Blue Origin receiving 255 point Five million from the U.S. Air Force to help develop the rocket, but the Pentagon did not choose New Glenn for further contracts last year instead of selecting SpaceX and ULA for multiple awards, cumulatively worth billions of dollars, a loss that Blue Origin cited when it announced New Glenn's delay. Blue Origin's third major problem is its stable of rocket engines, headlined by the BE-4, which will power its new Glenn rocket. The company previously said that its BE-4 engines would be ready for flight in 2017. However, four years later, development issues and a lack of hardware for testing quickly meant Blue Origin has yet to deliver its first flight engines. The company is pushing to have two BE-4 engines ready by the end of this year. Notably, BE-4s are important beyond Blue Origin, as ULA signed a deal to use the engines to power its Vulcan rockets, choosing Blue Origin over Aerojet Rocketdyne as its supplier. ULA is pushing to have its first Vulcan rocket ready to launch by the end of this year, and Blue Origin's BE-4 engines are expected to be a, if not the, final piece added before launch. Bezos has spent the majority of his time in the past two decades focused on Amazon, but along the way has steadily sold pieces of his stake in the tech giant to fund Blue Origin's development to the tune of a billion a year, or possibly more. Last month, Bezos stepped down as Amazon CEO, with many in the space industry expecting him to spend more time focusing on his space company. However, there are also many who expect him to return to Amazon so as not to hinder the next steps of space. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.